If you've been in the has -been Hotel or Hello a Boss community for a while, you're more than likely familiar with some of the drama that has occurred. Controversy occurs in any fandom, but it's especially prevalent in the Helloverse fandom due to the content of the shows. I've covered some of these topics in the past, however, there are many new ones that you may not be aware of. This video will be structured in an iceberg format. If you're not aware of what an iceberg video is, it's a fun way to present information or facts around a specific topic. The iceberg goes in descending order with different tiers. At the tip of the iceberg, you have the surface level knowledge that the average viewer would know, while at the bottom, you have the obscure and lesser known info. With everything covered, it's time to dive in. However, before we get started, I want to take a moment to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is an immersive, free-to-play mobile RPG where you fight monsters, build up your champions, and collect epic loot. Raid features over 650 unique champions across many different factions. My personal favorite faction is the Demon Spawn, because they feature a vast array of demons and imps. In order to help introduce you to the world of Raid Shadow Legends, I've created a handful of helpful tips using the word Raid. Firstly, we have R. R stands for Raiding and it's the most important part of the game. Make sure to log in daily and participate in Raids to level up your squad. A stands for Attack. The key to winning any battle is having a strong attack champion. I recommend a nuker who can deal massive damage with a single spell. I stands for Inventory. Inventory management is key to maximizing the potential of your troops. Make sure to equip better gear when you get the chance. Lastly, we have defense. Having a tanky support hero to heal and protect your troops will help to maximize your defense. Raid is currently doing a fourth anniversary celebration where you can get access to epic loot, free gifts, and a new fusion event, which will also allow you to get access to an anniversary themed legendary champion. But there's more. If you use my link in the description or scan my QR code on screen now, you'll get access to an insane starter pack worth $30. You'll get the epic champion Kellen the Shrike, 4 energy refills, 4 magic potions, and 4 XP brews. These items are just what you need if you're looking to get started in the world of Raid. So if you'd like to support the channel, just hit my link in the description and download Raid Shadow Legends today. And of course, thanks so much to Raid for sponsoring the video. MatPat's Husband Hotel Film Theory On March 16th, 2021, MatPat did a film theory on Husband Hotel. Although the video was positively received by his audience, to veteran Husband fans, content creators, team members of the show, and Vivzy Pop herself, it was terrible. If you see staff members making fun of your video, that's when you know you messed up. The video was a disaster from getting basic facts wrong to misunderstanding the plot of Hell of a Boss in general. The first issue is that the video had little to no proper research. Segments of the video just straight up didn't make sense, such as when he says that Alistair's radio voice is random, and that Vivzy probably took the idea of Alistair from Bill Cipher. A quick Google search would reveal the reasoning behind Alistair's radio voice, and it would also reveal that Alistair was from Vivzy's Zoo phobia series. Another example is when MatPat theorizes that IMP are the biggest threat to Charlie. IMP are a group of low-level imps and a hellhound. To think that they would be any threat to Charlie is mind-boggling. MatPat calls Stolas, Solas. He also says heck of a boss and refers to the IMP as the immediate murder patrol. It was pretty apparent that MatPat didn't watch either of the shows and was purely doing a video on has -been because it's popular. It's horrible when these large corporate channels do videos on topics without proper research because it introduces a lot of new fans to the show many of which are children. These viewers will enter the fandom under false pretenses. They'll believe certain story elements, and only later will they find out that what they believed in was false. The majority of the criticisms of the video could have been avoided if MatPat had reached out to a creator in the fandom, or a member of the team such as Vivzy, to just read the script over. I used to wonder why people on Twitter, especially FNAF fans, were always so toxic towards MatPat whenever he made a theory on their show, but after watching his theory on Hasbin, I understand their feelings completely. In the past, MatPat made a theory video on For Honor and it was pretty terrible and was universally dunked on too. It's made me a little anxious for the future because there's 100% going to be some horribly made theories about Hasbin when it finally releases. I at least hope if MatPat does future theories on the shows, he'll take the time to do proper research. FNAF Hasbin Wiki War Back in January 2020, there was drama between the FNAF community and fans of Hasbin Hotel. This was a couple of months after the release of the Hasbin pilot and the first episode of Hell of a Boss, so both shows were at peak popularity. A number of immature FNAF fans, many of which were children, used Discord to coordinate and raid the Hasbin Hotel Wiki. The husband wiki has been considered a punching bag for many years due to inaccurate information and Vivzy Pop herself saying not to believe it. Although the wiki has improved, 
improved gradually over time and features much more reliable information, the 2020 raid highlighted the lack of security measures. The FNAF fans vandalized the wiki and deleted many pages, created new ones or griefed already existing pages. The majority of the pages were edited just to contain unfunny memes and other garbage, though I do like this image of Ed and Viv being swapped to Yandir Dev and Scott Cawthon. Overall, this drama was quite small and harmless. However, if you're aware of the Scott Cawthon and Vivzy drama, which occurred a couple months later, this isn't the last time that the FNAF and Hasbin fandom have had disagreements. Scott Cawthon Vivzy Pop Drama Carrying on from the last point, the second time the drama erupted between the Hasbin community and FNAF was to do with the Scott Cawthon situation. Basically, what happened was it was revealed that Scott Cawthon made donations to controversial political figures. This led to Scott and his wife getting doxxed. Vivzy Pop saw a tweet made by a friend on the topic and gave her opinion, and as a result of this, she got doxxed. This led to drama between the FNAF community and Hasbin fans. Instagram accounts There used to be official Instagram accounts run by members of the Spindle Horse team. They roleplayed as characters from both Hell of a Boss and Hasbin Hotel. They used to post fun sneak peeks, interact with each other, and provide additional lore to the show's universe. Unfortunately, they were shut down in 2020 for a number of reasons. I have an entire video dedicated to the lore of these profiles, which I'll have linked below. The two Instagrams involved in the most controversy were Octavia and Cherry Bomb. Octavia's Instagram was shut down since people started to DM it NSFW images and Stovia art. Cherry Bomb's account was shut down out of nowhere in early 2020. Shortly after it was deactivated, a random fan stole the username of the profile and started posting as if they were the official account. According to some users, Spinalhorse had to DMCA the account to take it down. However, it took that with a grain of salt. Recently, Vivzy popped did a number of tweets about the Instagrams. In particular, Vivzy mentioned that she regrets making them due to the issues they've caused, one in particular being the fact that the accounts are still cited as canon when they're not. She said that it's uncomfortable because information from the accounts is constantly constantly used in lore videos about the show when it's no longer canon. Overall, the Instagram accounts have been a blemish on the history of the shows. They've allowed for some world building within the fandom, however, the drama surrounding them and their eventual shutdown has led to them being something Spindlehorse would prefer to forget. Rocky Raccoon Rocky Raccoon is a YouTube animator who does animations and YouTube shorts featuring characters from Hasbun Hotel and Hell of a Boss. These videos typically feature the characters dancing to a song or TikTok trend. These videos rack in crazy amounts of views, with his most popular Luna animation having 13 million views. One thing Rocky does is include cameos of characters from other shows or media, such as Poppy Playtime, Spooky Month, and Dream. There's been a lot of drama surrounding Rocky. There's been countless videos and Reddit posts made about him. The main criticisms are that his channel is a content farm, his audience are children, and that they can't take criticism. Personally, I'd agree with some of these criticisms. When he does an animation, he re-uploads it over and over again. The only difference is he puts text at the top saying something stupid like, only in Ohio. Uploading a video once is fine, but reposting it over and over definitely counts as content farming. One recent example is his video titled, Is Bob Veltsev Pregnant? Top 10 Ohio Moments in Hell of a Boss x FNAF x Spooky Month Animation Memes. The thumbnail is fetish art, and the video is just a compilation of other clips he's made. The dislike ratio is pretty horrific too. Due to Rocky's content, he gets into drama on Twitter and TikTok. Rocky then responds to these criticisms in a YouTube livestream or on his community tab, which leads more people to pile on. If he just ignored them and focused on improving his content, then the people hating would stop. Personally, I think Rocky has real talent, and he has the potential to create something wonderful. One idea that could work would be to integrate the characters into their own show and create fun stories around that. A channel that does this type of content, which I'm a big fan of, is Pants Hat. They use characters from other pieces of media and combine them in a way that makes engaging content. Similarly, another animation channel for more younger viewers would be Zamination. They create fun stories, featuring a variety of fan-favorite characters that everyone recognizes. Recognizes. I think if Rocky perhaps tried a similar idea to these two channels, he could create some fantastic content, rather than being dependent on whatever is trendy on TikTok. Art Theft this one is quite obscure. Basically, on three separate occasions, Spindlehorse has been accused of art theft. The first one is to do with the official Hell of a Boss Streamily. Back in 2020, the Streamily used fan art made by an artist called NinjaHaku21. The artist wasn't credited at all. Twitter user Diva Cyanide did a tweet about the situation and politely asked for NinjaHaku to get credited. Two days later, the Streamily changed the icon to a frame of the show with no explanation. 
Ninja Haku did a couple tweets about it and said that the situation was unfortunate, especially since they didn't contact him first or apologize. However, he said he's glad that the icon was changed. This situation was quite minor. It was a simple mistake and it's good that the icon was changed. However, the unpaid intern or whoever was in charge of the account probably should have done more research or apologized to Haku after nabbing his art without prior consent. The second occasion is to do with some shibi pins. Artist Koto456 made some shibi designs of characters from Hell of a Boss and Husband Hotel. Months later, the Helliverse Twitter debuted some new shibi designs, which looked remarkably similar to the ones made by Koto. Koto did a tweet shortly after saying he wasn't contacted and it's just a coincidence. The third occasion is to do with an Alistair pin. Artist Pest Fox made an Alistair pin in November 2019. In Halloween 2020, the Helliverse account revealed a new Alistair pin which bears a striking resemblance to the one made by Pest Fox. Once users brought up these examples, one of the merch managers, HelixD, came out and explained that it was just a coincidence. I will have everything he said on screen so you can pause and give it a read if you like, but basically he said that similar looking art will eventually happen and that they didn't plagiarise fan artists. They also actively recruit and hire fan artists. So, as for my thoughts on these three situations, I think it's up to the viewer's interpretation. If you take a look at the pins side by side, they're incredibly similar. The Alistair example is the most obvious. I personally think the fan design looks better than the official one. I can understand why fans were annoyed. Let me know what you think of this art theft situation in the comments down below. Fostice. Fostice was a former illustrator and visual developer for Hasbun Hotel. They were also in charge of the Hasbun Hotel comics. She was a close friend of Vivzy Pop for years and stopped working for Spinal Horse in 2020. Fostice would commonly livestream the creation of art or the Hasbun comics. During these streams, since she was close with Viv, Fostis would reveal bits and pieces of the lore about the show and its characters. Fostis received heavy criticism in 2020 when they announced that Alistair is aromantic asexual. According to her, Viv was scared to announce that Alistair was asexual due to backlash. Shortly after, Viv had to come out and say that nothing should be canon except what comes from her. So the situation was quite sad. Fostis shouldn't have been harassed in the first place and it's a bit of a disgrace that deranged shippers would go to such lengths over fictional pixels on a screen. Unfortunately, once Fostis Fostis left Spindle, she privated all of her past live streams, so years of content is now permanently lost. Added to this, since she no longer works for Viv, it's hard to tell what characters and lore she created are canon or not, so we just have to wait and see when the full show airs. Subreddits Reddit has a large amount of subreddits dedicated to the shows. The two biggest are r slash husband hotel and r slash hell of a boss. Since these two subreddits are the largest public forums for the shows, they've been marked as targets for people that dislike either shows or Vivzy Pump. During the release period of Husband Hotel back in 2019, Husband Hotel was rated multiple times. Haters of the show created a subreddit called r slash anti husband hotel and dedicated the subreddit to criticism and scrutiny of the show. Communities dedicated to hating a specific topic quickly become toxic, and this subreddit was a prime example of this. Posts ranged from illegal content to homophobia and racism. The subreddit was eventually set to private by the mod team, and that was the last we heard of anti Hasbin Hotel. Another example was Gay Spider Brothel. It was a satirical meme subreddit that was a spiritual successor to another subreddit called 195. On this subreddit, you would have to post a meme before clicking off the sub, meaning that the subreddit would have a constant flow of content, allowing it to quickly grow. Gay Spider Brothel's name was a reference to the many and SFW subreddits in the fandom, such as Hell of a Brothel and the Has Been Brothel. The moderation team eventually left the subreddit and it's been left dormant ever since. My personal favourite post on the subreddit was this cursed image of someone's bedroom. It gives off a menacing aura. NTSG like with any online community, there's bound to be bad actors who will use any illegitimate method they can to grow their presence or gain money. In the Hell of a Boss community, the channel most guilty of this goes by the name NTSG. I've covered this guy in depth in two previous videos, so I'll give a quick rundown. NTSG is a Russian channel that uploads fake or misleading videos on Hasbin Hotel and Hell of a Boss. He leaked Vivzy Pop's Patreon content on multiple occasions, and after I called him out on this, he made a terrible video that was not well received by the community. Since my videos on him, him, there's been a couple of new revelations. The first is that after my videos on him, NTSG's second channel, NTSG Live, got demonetized. Once NTSG realized he couldn't make money off the channel anymore, he immediately sold it to a viewer of his. He made a new channel called Gempkin where he posted more leaked content. The videos were thankfully taken down by Spindle Horse. On NTSG's main, he went back to posting more clickbait misleading content. One video called New Hell of a Boss Big Update Sneak Peek Teaser Trailer is just a video of clips taken at the Level Up convention. The clickbait title is horrific on its own, but to make matters worse, he stole the thumbnail off a Twitter artist called T The Cook. 
In a tweet made by T, they mentioned how NTSG stole their art without credit to mislead people. NTSG stole art from them in the past previously, and they have said multiple times they don't want him to repush their work, and yet he continues to do it. Because of the clickbait title and thumbnail, the comments are filled with confused fans thinking it's a new episode when it's just a repost. NTSG's newest video is called Welcome to Husband Hotel Season 1 Episode 1 Sneak Peek Teaser Trailer 2023. Once again, this video is just a bunch of clips we've seen previously. However, he titles it as if it's a legit trailer for the first episode. Furthermore, the thumbnail has a one on it, and it is themed similar to how official episodes are, so that fans will be fooled into clicking on it. Lastly, just like in the past, NTSG steals fan art to post on his community tab. As always, he refuses to credit the artists on the majority of his posts. Overall, this channel is easily the worst one in the fandom. It's a miracle that YouTube hasn't terminated his channel yet. Fixing the characters. One of the longest running criticisms against Hasbun Hotel is the character designs. This has led many users to make their own variations of the characters on sites like Twitter and Tumblr. The biggest example of this was in December 2019 when YouTuber Mepity uploaded a video titled Redesigning Characters from Hasbun Hotel. The video has a horrific dislike ratio with 36,000 dislikes. So why was the video so hated? Well, the first reason was that the original title of the video was called Fixing Characters from Hasbun Hotel. As some users have brought up, using the term fixing is distasteful towards the original artist. You're basically saying that your art is better than theirs. Mepity eventually changed the title after the backlash, but the negative title left a bad taste in many users' mouths. The second issue is to do with the introduction of the video. Before Mepity actually redesigns the characters, she spends the first half of the video discussing issues with the character designs in the pilot. Some of these criticisms are valid, However, others are a little half-baked. We've heard these criticisms before, countless times, but the main ones are the colour palette being too similar, the body types being too similar, and the characters not having enough unique features. This leads us on to the main body of the video, which is her fixing the characters. I'm going to be as polite as I can, but when I show you the images, you'll be able to see precisely why the video was so heavily disliked. The first character redesigned was Charlie. Virtually nothing was changed except for making Charlie taller and altering the colours on her outfit. For Vaggie, she made her chubby enlarged the bow on her head and removed some details from her outfit. Alistair is probably the worst one out of the lot. His design just overall looks worse and as one commenter pointed out, Mepity talked earlier about the importance of colour palettes but proceeded to give Alistair a random coloured suit that doesn't fit his aesthetic at all. Angel Dust looks more or less the same, he just has less details overall and a slightly altered colour scheme. Plus, he has a scarf instead of a bow tie. After the backlash, Mepity made a follow-up video six months later. In this video, she immediately acknowledges some of the criticisms put against her and admits she made some mistakes. The redesigns this time are a lot better, I personally like her raggy design, it's really pretty. However, I'm not a fan of Alistair's. He looks like he belongs in a has-been roleplay wiki. This video was definitely an improvement. However, it is still not without its issues. As some commenters pointed out, the overall tone of Mepity's wording was a bit rude. Some of her excuses don't really measure up either. Mepity says the reason the video was so badly made was because she drew the art at 4am. That's not really a good excuse, and if that was a problem, she could have just held off on making the video. The second point is that when confronted with the fact that her original video was clicked bit and offensive. She says that she deliberately made it clickbait so that it would get a reaction. She says the video was successful and the money made from it helped pay for her college housing, which is awesome. However, you can make engaging videos without being offensive or clickbaiting your audience. The third issue is the framing of the video. The first half of the video is the actual redesigns, however the next 20 minutes is her discussing criticism she received. If the video was just her apologising and then Mepity showcasing her new designs, it would have been a fantastic video, but the second section sours the entire thing. It's a bit odd for her to apologise for rallying people up, but then proceed to god defend her original video into the grave, like she should have just admitted that she messed up and that was it. Overall, the situation is a cautionary tale about why it's important to give constructive feedback, especially when people criticise Vivzi's designs, but proceed to make an inferior version themselves. It would have been interesting to see Mepity's thoughts on the new official redesigns of the characters for the final show. However, she's quite inactive on her YouTube channel, unfortunately. Has been hate dumb. This is a topic I'll probably address in its own video in the future, but if you've been in the community for any amount of time, you'll be aware of the has been hate dumb. Basically, any time either has been hotel, Hell of a Boss or Vivzi Pop are mentioned on sites like Twitter, a cyber mob will appear to remind everyone how bad the shows are. The most recent example of drama was to do with Vivzi Pop's naming of Vaggy. In a tweet made on February 22nd, a user said, Vivzi Pop, after naming her only lesbian character Vaggy, aka Vagatha, and making her main personality traits being hating men and liking her girlfriend. The tweet racked up over 5,000 likes, and the creator eventually deleted the tweet. 
However, the quote retweets were full of people comparing Vizzy Pop to JK Rowling. The comparison obviously makes no sense at all, but the point about Vaggy's personality is bizarre. Like, the Hasbin Hotel pilot was just a pilot. Twitter users seriously expect a 20 minute pilot to include deep lore and plot development. It's meant to set the stage for the rest of the series and introduce everyone to the universe. Vaggy hating men isn't her entire personality. The entire point is that she has trust issues, which we'll see developed on in the full series. These people expect every character to be either 100% evil or 100% good. You can't have any nuance or character development. In December 2021, the original Hasbin pilot voice actors released announcements confirming that they were let go of the project and not be in the final show. While fans were sad that the voice actors for Nifty, Cherry Bomb, Charlie and Alistair were gone, none of the announcements hit as hard as Kovacs. Angel and Kovac were extremely beloved by the fans and many were sad and angry that this happened. Some more hardcore audience members perceived the firing as a betrayal by Medrano and there was speculation that her having Broadway stars and actors, especially Norman Reedus in Hell of a Boss, went to her head and that she only wanted that level of star power in her show. Some users proposed the concept that she ditched her friends that helped her once she gained her success. While many were livid, others defended Medrano, saying that the VAs were not part of the SAG AFTRA union and therefore could not be legally hired. Personally, I think the reason they were replaced was maintain a higher level of consistency in the show. If you have a professional production, it makes sense to hire Broadway actors with experience in musicals which is what Vivzi is currently doing. The pilot voice cast consisted of internet personalities and cameos, which was great for pitching the concept of the show. However, for a final release, it makes sense to hire experienced actors to simplify the already overcomplicated process of having both a singing and speaking role for so many of the characters. Overall, the situation was quite sad. One thing people mention frequently is the lack of official content versus the overwhelming amount of fan content. This means that fans will never be happy with the final product. Although I don't necessarily agree with this take. There definitely is a subsection of the fandom that are too attached to the pilot and won't be happy with the full thing. It's important that we put our trust in the Spindle Horse team to deliver something awesome. From the sneak peeks we've seen so far, the show looks great and I put my faith into Vivzy picking a stellar voice cast to represent the characters we know and love. Episode drama. Including the pilot, there's been 10 episodes so far of Hell of a Boss. Typically, the episodes have been released smoothly, however, there's been some drama surrounding a few of them. The first episode that led to controversy was the Shrub episode, Season 1, Episode 4. This episode is featured quite low on tier lists, and personally, for me, it's one of the weaker ones. The main criticisms include the episode being released too soon after the previous, the Shrubs were weaker villains, and the episode didn't serve a purpose in the wider lore. I cover the Shrub episode a bit more in depth in my episode ranking video, but this episode was the first one where people started to seriously criticise the show. The next episode was Season 1 Episode 7, Aussies. I personally love this episode, however this one caused a lot of discussion and controversy within the community. The two main issues is that many people criticise it for focusing too much on Stolitz, and the fact that the episode was part 1 of a two part series. Stolitz was a central theme in previous episodes but the finale was the episode that really cemented it as a main part of the show. This was controversial with people saying that the show was being derailed in favour of Stolitz. The second issue was that it was the first part of a two part finale. As of 2023, the second part is still indefinitely postponed and once news of the finale being delayed was announced, many fans were angry at Spiddle Horse or just dropped the series. Similarly to Aussies, every episode from then on has been involved in drama. Season 2 episode 1 is no different with drama exploding surrounding the content of the episode once again being focused on Stolitz. This led to some YouTube reviewers making negative reviews of the episode, one example being a video titled The Episode That Ruined Hell of a Boss. This video has a horrible dislike ratio and the main reason is the clickbait title and the actual content of the video featuring some bizarre criticisms. The video was heavily criticised on Twitter by fans. Many of these tweets are deleted unfortunately, but Vivzy Pop herself gave her opinion as well. The most recent episode, Season 2 Episode 2, once again had some drama associated with its release. Once again, negative reviews were made on the episode, and in particular, the relationship of Stolas and Blitz was put into question. With each episode of the show releasing, it feels like more drama surrounds the characters and the lore. This trend will most likely continue into the future. Has been hell of a leaks. Back in January of this year, leaked content surrounding Hasbin Hotel and Helva Boss was posted onto the internet. They quickly spread to Twitter, Reddit, TikTok and YouTube. The leaks consisted of storyboards and audition sheets. The majority of this content was taken down via the copyright system. However, for many fans, including myself, it was a shame to see content that wasn't supposed to be revealed months into the feature getting spoiled. It was especially upsetting when people started to reply to official tweets about Hasbin with the leaks. This meant that many unsuspecting 
Wing fans would check the replies of the tweet and get spoiled, ruining their enjoyment of future plot developments. This situation overall was very disappointing. It was a massive slap in the face to the Spindlehorse team who've spent years developing the characters and lore for us to enjoy. Shipping Wars Shipping has been a long-standing contentious point within the fandom. For those who are unaware, shipping refers to the act of pairing certain characters together romantically. Examples of canon ships in the fandom are Blitzo and Stolas, Moxie and Millie, and Vaggy and Charlie. Many fans create their own fan pairings in their head and ship characters together who might have some chemistry. One popular example being Husker Dust, which is the pairing of Husk and Angel Dust. Shipping on its own is fine and can lead to some amazing fan art and fun stories. However, like with anything on the internet, it's easy for people to take it a step too far. Examples include problematic pairings such as Octavia and Luna, or Octavia and Stolas. Added to this, some fans refuse to accept the canon pairings as canon, one example being Charlie and Vaggy. Despite being confirmed as canon, I've seen fans refuse to acknowledge it as canon on countless occasions. As mentioned previously in the Iceberg video, when Faustice confirmed that Alistair was asexual, it led to drama within the fandom as some shippers liked shipping Alistair with characters like Charlie. Vivzy Pop herself had to come out and discuss shipping in a 2018 tweet. In the tweet, she mentioned how ship bullying is starting to become an issue, and that she believes you should do what you want, provided it's not hurting anyone. Shipping has been a constant issue, and with the full release of has -Been being right around the corner, it's likely that drama surrounding shipping wars will continue into the future. So that's the entire iceberg covered. This video took quite a while to research because some of the controversies discussed were quite obscure. It was a lot of fun to make, so I hope you were able to learn something new. As always, if you enjoyed the video or have any thoughts, I'd love for you to leave them in the comments down below. Special thanks to iOx for helping with the video. Thanks for watching.